Welcome everyone to the Campus Pride Spotlight Series. My name is Ayla Z, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm an intern with Campus Pride. For those who don't know, Campus Pride is a leading national nonprofit that empowers student groups and student leaders working to create equitable LGBTQ plus college and university environments. You can learn more at campuspride.org. Today I'll be interviewing the University of Colorado Boulder for the Campus Pride Spotlight Series. This series is all about what today's campuses offer today's LGBTQ plus students, our diverse genders and sexuality spectrum. We will highlight colleges and universities that are providing LGBTQ plus inclusivity on their campuses and learn more about their programs and services. I want to introduce to introduce to you the representatives from the University of Colorado at Boulder now. Hi, I'm Morgan Seaman. I'm the director of the Pride Center at CU Boulder, and I'm so happy to be part of this interview. And I'm Alex Dutramaeda. I'm the assistant director for the Pride Office, pronouns she, her, hers, and I'm also very happy to be here. Thank you both so much for introductions. It's wonderful to have you here today. Um, you have a five out of five star rating on the Campus Pride Index at campusprideindex.org, and you've been ranked among the best of the best in terms of LGBTQ plus friendly college um, environments. So congratulations. Um, to start out, tell us what are some things that are on your campus for LGBTQ plus life? Um, we've developed quite a few things. Um, number one, of course, we did a lot of policy work to make sure that our LGBTQ students are accepted and supported all across campus um, and that we have resources for them. So for example, we have um, gender neutral restrooms in the rec center. So both, both near the pool, so separate ones near there, and then in the main locker rooms as well. Um, we've worked on creating new buildings with gender inclusive yeah. restrooms. And we also run a number of pro uh, programs such as our pride picnic every fall, um, which is just to welcome in our returning LGBTQ students, um, as well as staff and faculty and our incoming students. Um, and it's a great time to just meet and greet each other. Um, and I'm sure we'll get into more programs as we go through the interview. Thank you so much for that. That was an amazing answer. Um, so what example can you share that signifies the importance of having a space on campus for an LGBTQ plus student? Alex, do you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so, I mean, we, we all know that LGBTQ plus students need a space on campus. Um, the, just the environment of campus is often so cisnormative, so heterosexist, um, that it is important for folks to be able to have an oasis where they can go and know that they can be themselves and also where they can uh, learn about themselves and not feel pressured to, to fit in with the majority. Um, and it's also important for community building so that um, we're looking for students to have a place where they can find each other, uh, make connections, and really build up those support networks and communities. Really good answer. I really like the idea of having just like a space for LGBTQ plus students. So may you please um, tell us more about your campus's LGBTQ plus inclusive policies and how do students on campus feel about such policies? One of the big things that we've worked on in the last few years is to ensure that our trans students in particular can be housed with supportive roommates and anywhere on campus. So while we have a spectrum floor um, in one of our res halls, which is dedicated to LGBTQ students, we've also ensured that um, both our lesbian, gay, and bi uh, students, as well as our trans students can be part of that program, but housed in other res halls. So they don't have to choose their identity over their educational interests um, because we have a number of residential academic programs that students participate in, which are located in different halls. Um, so that's one of them. Um, we've worked very closely with our health center and we have a trans care team made up of both medical and mental health professionals as well as myself. Um, and we aim to help those students who are interested in transition or interested in sexual health um, to ensure that they have doctors and nurses who are culturally competent with our LGBTQ students. Um, I mentioned earlier the rec center has programs. We've also worked with athletic centers and club sports to make sure that they have policies in place, um, especially for our trans students. And then um, we, we are running a program um, that will help increase visibility across campus. So it's not just our office that, that serves LGBTQ students. 
Am I missing anything, Alex? I'm sure I'm missing stuff. I, I think that's good. I think some of these other questions are gonna touch yeah. on other things too. Really nice. Um, so in either of your personal opinions, why does your campus feel the need to provide spaces and resources for LGBTQ plus students? Well, um, one of the last campus surveys that we did showed that both our undergraduate and graduate LGBTQ students are um, withdrawing rather than continuing through to completion for their degrees. So we know um, from that data and other data, um, national data on LGBTQ students, that they are a particular population that suffers from marginalization, um, from being minoritized, um, and needs some extra support um, to ensure their success. So that's one of the main reasons that we have a pride office that focuses specifically on LGBTQ students. Um, we also serve staff and faculty to ensure that their needs are being met. Um, because without that, I think that we, we, there's no way to address specific challenges that LGBT people are facing on our campus. We work very closely with the office that deals with discrimination and harassment um, to help them with certain questions on how do we make the campus more inclusive, how to respond to certain complaints that deal with LGBTQ identities. Um, we work with the police department on how to better interact with LGBTQ students to ensure that they feel respected. Um, and we work with the Res Life programs to ensure that we're creating actual physical spaces where students are living that feel comfortable to them, where they don't feel like they have to hide their identity if they choose to be out. Um, we've worked with financial aid to ensure students who get cut off from parental support um, can find other avenues to get financial support for campus. So it's really critical to have an office that can address these various challenges that our LGBTQ students face. Really nice answer. Um, so um, how do LGBTQ plus students get involved on your campus and do you have active out LGBTQ plus student leaders across campus? We do. We have all sorts of student leaders. Um, we have a group that's called Out in STEM. So um, it's mainly our students involved with science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, but that also includes um, some other sciences too. Um, and they're one of our most active student groups. They actually won the best student group of the year uh, two years ago. Um, they've been coming up with new and different events as well. Um, they learned about Dr. Evelyn Hooker, who went to CU Boulder and was one of the people really responsible for getting um, homosexuality out of the diagnostic and statistical manual for mental disorders um, back in 1980. So they developed an award for um, allyship within the STEM fields and, and they, now that's a regular event for them. Um, we have, of course, a Gender and Sexuality Alliance, a GSA. Um, that's one of our biggest groups as well. And they hold a couple of really big events, our yeah. annual drag show, which sees anywhere from 1,000 to 5,000 people attend across the area. Um, they also do queer formal. Um, and then we have some smaller groups that are really meant to support more specific subpopulations within the LGBTQ community, such as um, Bring Your Own Gender, BYOG, um, for our trans non-binary students um, and those who are questioning their gender identity. Um, we have Biphoria, which is for those who identify as bisexual. Um, and then we have some offshoot groups, um, depending on how excited students are about running a group, such as um, Polycule, which was um, all about polyamory. Um, and we have some students who are very interested in creating groups that are both spiritual and um, focused on LGBTQ identities. So we try to have a little something for every subgroup within our population to ensure that they feel included and supported. That is so cool. And that's so cool that an alum um, took out, you know, LGBT, being LGBTQ plus out of, you know, mental health issue. That's really yeah. cool. <laughs> So if you're if an LGBTQ plus student has an issue of harassment inside or outside the classroom, how will it get remedied or handled? Yeah. Um, since we do our office, both Alex and I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one consults. 
we try to build that relationship where students can come to us with any challenges that they're facing. Um, but we also have a office that deals with discrimination and harassment called the Office of Institutional Equity and Compliance. Um, and they have an anonymous reporting button that anybody can click on and report issues. Um, then that office follows up with them to see if they want to be involved in the process from there or if they just want to report it um, so the university knows about it and can maybe address some problem areas if, if that particular unit is coming up again and again. Um, because we have such personal great relations relationships with students, um, they will often come in to us, especially when they're unsure if they should report something and just talk about, you know, I'm not sure this happened. It makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't know what I can do about it. Um, and so oftentimes Alex or I will reach out to that harassment and discrimination office and tell them about it um, and see what, what the process is. Um, is this a case that would, would find an advantage in the student participating in, you know, describing what happened and what the outcome might be, what are some solutions. Um, and sometimes that's enough and sometimes, or sometimes it's enough to talk to us and sometimes we assist the student to go and talk to OIC, whether that means, you know, telling them where that office is at or actually going with them um, because it can be intimidating to talk about these things. And then we also have an office of victim assistance, which helps people who are going through some sort of discrimination or some sort of trauma that they've experienced. And we have um, trans and trans competent counselors in that office. Um, the same with our regular counseling center. So if we need to hand off a student, we always have somebody who is is part of the community or has shown themselves to be a strong ally of the community to pass them off to. Really good answer. Um, so how is your campus supporting LGBTQ plus students across their diverse intersections of identity? Alex, do you want to take that? Sure. Um, so our pride office is part of a larger center that's called the Center for Inclusion and Social Change. Um, and within that office, we have our area, and then we have folks who are working on like intercultural engagement, identity development, supporting first gen students, um, and just doing kind of general identity education. So because we're in that space, um, we're able to do a lot of collaborative programming with the other offices um, so that we can highlight certain populations, create more specific spaces for folks. Um, and be able to provide education that is actually relevant uh, to the lives of the students that we're uh, educating. It's been a really great move for us to be part of the Center for Inclusion because it's given us a much bigger staff. Um, whereas, you know, Alex and I, we've always been a staff of two for the LGBTQ office. Um, now we are a staff of, I think, nine. Um, and so it's, it gives us opportunities to work with those who are working very closely with students of color or our Native American population, um, those who identify as women. So it's been great to collaborate more closely on those events within the same office. Um, it's not like we didn't collaborate before, but now that we can hold events together in our space, um, it's been really a great advantage to take, take into our, our repertoire. Yeah, that's really cool. That's yeah. really cool. Like how it combines and that really mm -hmm. helps um, reach diverse populations. Yeah, yeah. It helps us to realize that a lot of the same things that our students of color are facing, our LGBTQ students are facing. So we can come together and, and take some more or better action on how to advocate for each other and, and how that um, action of advocation or advocating can really help both communities as, as well as other communities that are also minoritized in some way. Mm -hmm. Social justice, equality and equity are constant journeys of progress. So what's on the agenda for your campus to improve within the next two to three years? Two to three years. Um, let me think for a second. That's a big question. Um, part of it is, 
is also working for our staff. So students got um, trans healthcare long before staff got it. Um, so part of that is working to ensure that our staff has the same access to things. Um, preferred name just came available for staff in the last year. And so there's a lot of computer systems we're still working on to ensure that that shows up in all the right places. Um, for students, um, it's been, our campus has been very active around racial equity, around talking about different issues that um, happen on our campus because we're a primarily white institution and how do we create more diversity and how do we address that diversity to ensure that they're supported, welcomed, um, that we have good resources for them. And I would say that's our, our main um, priority within the next two to three years, um, along with ensuring and I mean, because we're five out of five stars, we've obviously done a lot of work, um, but there's still a couple questions around athletics um, as to how inclusive we're being over there, because there is a different score for athletics versus campus pride as a, as a whole. Um, so we're still addressing some of that. Um, and we're we've been lucky enough to have um, a new director of diversity in athletics recently hired who wants to work with us. Um, we've had some coaches reach out to us. So that's another area that we're focusing on. And then of course, we're always focusing on interpersonal interactions. So it's great that we have all these policies in place, but we can't always control that student to student interaction. So we're trying to do um, a lot more education in the res halls um, because at CU Boulder, if you're first year, you're required to live in the res halls. So that's a great way for us to reach a whole bunch of students um, all at the same time um, and to give them at least some very basic um, education because not all of them have even that basic level. Um, but then working with the RAs, the resident advisors, on how can we create more purposeful um, advo advocacy programs um, that would address some of that um, equity, um, justice, uh, diversity issues that are important both on campus and across the nation. Really nice answer. Um, so what is the queerest or most LGBTQ plus thing on your campus? Oh, um, we have so many. Um, <laughs> it snows here a lot. And last year we instituted um, a queer snow person contest. Um, we do, we do, we like to do surprise events like this, um, where it's sort of a, a one time thing. Um, maybe it will become an annual thing because it snows here quite frequently. Um, what else do we do that is super queer? I mean, our picnic um, is is super queer friendly. Um, we do we we do participate in our local Boulder Pride, um, which is actually held in September um, rather than June when most prides are held, which is great for our school because we can participate down there. Last year, of course, we didn't have it in person, so we had a Pride motorcade um, where we all got in our cars, decorated them, and drove down the street honking like crazy. Um, so it was a lot of fun. Um, we, what else do we do, Alex? Um, we've done a queer art show. That was a lot of fun um, where we had queer students share their art. We do um, a traditional lavender graduation where we celebrate all of our LGBTQ students who are graduating and we give out our um, queer and trans focused scholarships. Um, what else, Alex? What am I forgetting? Yeah, well, um, one of our plans for the fall is around the, the Boulder Pride Week to Kind of cover the entire campus in pride flags um, and messages of support, like every building on campus, the major fields. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, this time next year we can say the entire campus is the queerest thing about campus. Yeah. Um, the other major event that we have is called the Transforming Gender Conference, and we get about a thousand people to that conference, 50% um, of which come from the community not associated with CU, and then 50% are associated with CU in, in some way. And we have over 60 different workshops that focus on transgender identities and issues. Um, we have a social gathering night for people just to connect with other trans folks. Um, we usually have a tract that is just for trans providers, for trans folks to give feedback to providers on how, you know, are their services really inclusive and 
welcoming. Um, and, and that's been a great effort um, to help with trans equality, not just at CU Boulder, but within the local region as well. Really cool, there's so much. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you describe your campus for a prospective LGBTQ plus student in three words? Three words. Um, I would describe it, and I'll give Alex a chance at this too, as um, supportive um, community and fantastic fun. <laughs> I will say, steal your word, community um, and learning and growing. Really nice. Um, it's been a pleasure talking to you both today. Um, please share for those watching on your website to learn more about LGBTQ plus life on your campus. Again, thank you so much. Um, campus Pride appreciates your hard work and your continued efforts to create an inclusive space for LGBTQ plus students at um, the University of Colorado Boulder. So again, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Campus Pride Spotlight series. If you wish to learn more about this campus or any other college or university, you can search for free at the Campus Pride Index online at campusprideindex.org. That's campusprideindex.org for over 400 plus college, college and university campuses that have come out as LGBTQ plus friendly. Again, my name is Isla and thank you so much for watching.